Hey everyone, happy new year, I suppose. <laughs> We're barely three weeks into January and this year already feels like it's been six months long. So um, how about I throw back to the beginning of 2020, hey? <laughs> you know how so many of us had big plans for 2020, like get our act together and be proactive and be healthy and be uh, active, all that. Um, well, I was right up there with you. And so 2019 me, still blissfully unaware of what 2020 was planning for all of us, decided that I would try and draw every day of the coming year. So I found a little diary and I decided to use that. And my goals for this diary were to try drawing a little bit every day, with the focus being on drawing something small and quick, but consistently, rather than come up with fresh ideas or finished sketches or developing original concepts. Spoiler alert, I did not manage to complete the challenge. <laughs> Here you can see a summary of the whole year. In orange are the days I managed to doodle. I succeeded in completing a minimum of about half of each month of the year, with my best month being September when I managed to draw every single day, and the worst month being October when I only managed 15 days out of 31. In total I completed 272 days out of 366, which comes to about 74% of the year. Considering that this was my first attempt at something like this, I'm pleasantly surprised, to be honest. Obviously this diary doesn't take into account any days when I did other types of drawing or painting, so some of the periods without doodles often meant I was working on paintings or in my regular sketchbook. My very first drawing was a small portrait of my dad while he sat reading on the sofa in front of me, and I like looking back on it because it, it feels like a nice start to that diary. Some of the doodles in this diary have led me to create bigger sketches or even full paintings, so I'll put those on the screen next to the sketches that they are relate to whenever that's relevant. So at first, building the habit was incredibly difficult. <laughs> I rarely draw small for one, and it took me a while to get used to the format of the diary. I was quite shy with it, I felt a bit too restricted, and I had difficulties not spending too much time on each page. Some days I forgot I needed to draw entirely, <laughs> and others, the stress and the pressure of it would lead me to not be able to open the diary at all. I also fell into the habit I in part started this whole project to get out of, which is to try and come up with ideas and concepts every time I drew. My unconscious desire to come up with new ideas every time I draw has always come in the way of me feeling productive or relaxing or simply enjoying the process, as well as be satisfied with my work. So that's the thought process I want to shake and this project helped me do so in the long run, but it was really tough for me in the beginning. I really had to force myself to doodle for the sake of doodling rather than with a bigger aim in mind, like finding ideas for paintings and bigger portfolio illustrations. Another one of the main obstacles I had to face for a good six months of working on this was how to make sure I fitted my drawing in each day without it feeling like a chore. For a long time I would work throughout the day and then push back the daily doodle until I was done with work and I would end up sitting on the sofa late in the evening not having drawn yet, dreading having to do the drawing, so much so that the pressure would build up more and more as time went by, and I would end up having to cram something in just before going to bed so, so that I didn't feel guilty for not drawing, on top of feeling stressed because I had to do it. So that wasn't good, it wasn't a healthy way to build that habit, and it was totally unnecessary too. Um, this project was entirely under my control, no one and nothing was forcing me to do this, so whipping myself up into a panic for it was a bit silly, but it brought a lot of my habits to my attention in uncomfortable but useful ways. And I definitely think that one of the great benefits of this project for me in the long run has been reducing the stress associated with creating, as well as the stress I associate with trying to build healthier habits. I'm a little bit of an all or nothing type person and that has acted to my detriment more often than not. So having to come to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to be able to execute this project to perfection and having to face some of my misconceptions and misguided expectations about myself was immensely helpful and interesting. This has made me practice recognising the validity of what I do manage to get done and not let what I haven't successfully completed or achieved come in the way of those accomplishments. 
As I started to grow more comfortable with the daily doodle habit, I started relaxing more into the project and I stopped overthinking as much or dreading each page. I made a conscious effort to shift my doodle time to first thing in the morning, which helped me focus on creating something quickly because I needed to start work. And it also triggered my sense of accomplishment early in the day, which helped improve my overall motivation levels on those days. Because I was quite hesitant and shy with the habit in the beginning, I mostly used pencils I could erase and kept to like monochromes or muted colors as those are my comfort zones. But as I grew more confident, I started using color more and more. And as you'll be able to see later, I even ended up using a lot of pens and even some highlighters and some colored pencils. In fact, I now prefer using pens to doodle, even in my regular sketchbook. They force me to be bolder and more confident and they, they feel very freeing. I don't know why, but psychologically, I just prefer them when I'm sketching at the moment. Another thing that this whole thing has helped me do is de-dramatize the sketching process, which was also one of my goals with this project. It pushed me to assign the same validity to all my sketches and doodles, regardless of how finished or how original each one was. Because each drawing takes up the same space in the diary, they are all equals and stand on the same playing field in my eyes. They are all something I decided to sit down and spend a little time and energy on, and they all represent how I felt and what I was able to do on that day. It taught me to acknowledge to myself that some days I simply don't have the tools to come up with ideas, but that is okay and doesn't invalidate me as an artist. It also helped me reconnect with the fact that sometimes I simply enjoy creating things with no inherent meaning or message, just for the fun of them, and those pieces are not less or more than any other piece I can create. Having art as my job, while it hasn't taken away my love for creating, has proven challenging when it comes to creating for the sake of creating, rather than for the purpose of creating content out of it. And by that, I don't mean that I create depending on what my audience likes or just for the purpose of creating work for my audience, but more that I need to allocate my time efficiently for my business to be viable, which requires being productive and producing work that will help me make a living, which can quickly become the focus every time I create, and I don't want that to be the case. Making a living from art is not easy, in part because it is essential to find a balance between creating work to live off of and creating work to indulge in our passion and pleasure. Most of the time, those things overlap heavily, which is ideal to me and to most artists, as we usually go into this job because we want to build a career out of what brings us the most joy and fulfillment. But the risk with turning your love into your job can be that you forget to create for no other reason than the joy of it. I think that sometimes I can take myself and my art a little too seriously. Basically, I've started to forget to just have fun with my work sometimes. Well, I do have fun with most of my work I need to, or I wouldn't feel fulfilled creating anything, but I don't just have fun, you know? There almost always needs to be a higher goal for what I'm creating for me to feel productive and like I deserve my career. With this diary, the only goal was to keep at it. Maybe learn some stuff about myself in the process, but generally reconnect with just having fun. When I first started it, I didn't even intend to share it with anyone, although I did ultimately show my progress to my patrons every month. But other than that, and this video, which I only decided to make a few months back, this diary was purely for the fun of it. And that felt really, really good. I think I miss drawing without worrying about whether I've improved or whether I've learned something or whether I've pushed the concept to its full potential. Those are questions I ask myself enough when I'm working. I don't need to apply that pressure to every bit of art I do. And in fact, sometimes it's just important to forget about worrying and just do, which is something I struggle with because worrying is one of my main skills in life. Anyway, everything I have listed so far are theories I already adhere to in principle, but I needed to face some of the facts myself in my own practice in order to properly learn the lessons. Sorry if I sounded a little dogmatic or over-analytical. <laughs> I often use these voiceovers to think out loud a bit, <laughs> and my mind can become a bit of a rabbit hole I fall into, um, so sorry if this was a bit rambly. Overall, this diary has been 
amazing to work on. I love the item itself. It's so small and a bit banged up now and it just looks worn and used and it's just a nice little object I can flip through and reflect on. Every drawing reminds me more or less of the day that I created it on. It, even if the drawing has nothing to do with how I felt at the time, I can still feel how I felt at the time. It reminds me of various events during the year, although it was 2020, so maybe that's not so, such a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, I don't know, it's something positive that came out of a really hard year. And I'm proud of how much I managed in it despite everything that happened um, I'm glad I powered through it and it's just a little thing that I feel I'm allowed to be proud of which is really nice. It's super interesting for me to look back at my evolution in the way I drew too. I definitely became more and more relaxed as the, as the time went by and I started being less fearful of what I was drawing and of the mediums I was using and whether I was going to ruin a page or not. Some days I literally just, as you will have seen by now, I just created something silly or something nonsensical, something that wasn't very good. And just putting pen to paper, even on the days where I just put some squiggles on the page, just felt good. And I'm so glad that I was able to reconnect with that part of things. I will be attempting another Doodle Diary for 2021, although sadly I didn't manage to find the same one, so I had to settle for a book of lower quality, which is sad. Um, I actually tried buying about three diaries before I finally one found one that's decent enough. <laughs> it was really frustrating. Anyway, I gave myself January off from the daily doodles because it has been a harrowing month so far, <laughs> but I will be picking it back up in February and I'll be sharing my progress with my patrons as I did with this one in 2020. And if all goes well, I'll make another video of it in 2022, but I won't make that a goal just yet. So don't quote me on it. I don't want to add pressure to the project. I want to just use it for fun first and then if it turns out well then I'll make a video, if not then I won't. Um, last note, I had a few people ask me if they could start their own daily doodle diaries and while it's really sweet that they felt they needed to ask, I obviously don't have any exclusivity to the idea, uh, nor the name for that matter, I only came up with the name because I love alliterations, <laughs> but I can't imagine I'm the first one to use it, so if any of you want to start a challenge like this for yourselves, you obviously don't need my permission, um, I'd love to see it though, if you're inspired by what I did and you want to do a similar thing, um, feel free to like put Doodle Diary, Miriam Tilson or something in your tags if you post it anywhere. I'd love to check out what you do. Um, we can build a small community around it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, something like that. Just if it inspires you to start your own challenge, um, I hope that you'll have fun. Make sure that is something that makes you happy. Never put pressure on yourself. Never feel like it's something that you need to show to anyone or like it means anything as far as your validity as an artist. Just have fun. Literally just use it to go nuts. And um, I hope that you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this little video. I hope that you found it vaguely entertaining and enjoyable. Before I leave you, let me quickly tell you about this video's sponsor. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Skillshare, but if you aren't, Skillshare is an online learning community. They create and host a huge variety of classes covering lots and lots of different topics and fields, ranging from video editing to fine art, photography, design, cooking, and lots, lots more. The platform is created specifically for learning, so there are no ads, and they are constantly launching new classes, so there is tons of content to browse and learn new skills or sharpen existing ones. An annual premium subscription subscription is less than $10 a month and you get access to their entire catalogue of videos as well as community discussions, transcripts and class projects. A video I have personally been enjoying and can recommend is Creative Breakthrough, 8 Exercises to Power Your Creativity, Confidence and Career by Danielle Kreiser. If I'm pronouncing this right, probably not. <laughs> Sorry, Danielle. She's also known as the Jealous Creator. I've been following her for quite a few years now on social media. I love this class because of how kind and honest Danielle is in it. She gives tons of really genuine and candid advice that can apply to basically any artist at any stage of their practice. She has a segment in which she talks about taking back control of what has damaged the artist in us in our life, which I personally got a bit emotional at. I highly recommend it if you need somewhere to start, uh, especially if you're thinking of trying a doodle diary and you're not exactly sure how to begin. 
If you'd like to check this class out or any of the other classes Skillshare offer, make sure to check out the link in the description of this video. The first 1000 of you to click the link will get a free trial of their premium membership. It's a really great way to discover new things and it will help support my channel in the process. Thank you to all of you so, so much for watching this video and helping me continue creating. Here's to <laughs> 2021. Let's see what it brings. In the meantime, take care everyone and I'll see you very soon. Bye.